Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Most of you would have traveled by aircraft, right? Commercial aircrafts fly at an altitude of around 35,000 feet or 10.5 kilometers. For that height, you can stack 12 Burj Khalifas on top of each other and still have some space left. The temperature at such heights is a staggering negative 50 degrees centigrade but the temperature inside the aircraft is a comfy 25 degrees centigrade. That's a difference of 75 degrees. But how is it possible? This is done by thermal insulation. Commercial aircrafts have three layers of materials covering the frame of the aircraft. The first layer is paint. Almost all aircrafts are painted in white on the outside. There are a number of reasons why this is done. One among them is to reflect the sun's radiation back into the atmosphere. As light colors reflect heat much better than dark colors, white is used. If you're interested in knowing in depth on why most commercial aircrafts are painted in white, drop a comment below and we'll make a dedicated video on it. Inside the aircraft, we have a layer of thermal and acoustic insulation. The insulation is made of fiberglass, which is encapsulated in plastic pillowcase coverings. Plastic pillowcase is mostly made up of mylar. The main reason why fiberglass was used is because it was an excellent insulator which is both lightweight and is also an excellent fire barrier. But how does one decide whether an object is an insulator or not? Insulators restrict the flow of heat through them while conductors allow free flow of heat. This is the statement you would have read in most of your textbooks. However, there's a small issue with this. A few electrical insulators like diamond are very good conductors of heat, in fact. Diamond is a better conductor of heat than metals like copper and iron. For this reason, the best way to differentiate between conductors and insulators is with the following statement. Conductors transfer heat with the help of electrons, while insulators transfer heat with the help of vibrations. We've discussed how conductors and insulators transfer heat from hot body to cold body in a different video. Do check it out. Thermal insulation is the process of reducing the loss or gain of heat by providing a barrier between the areas which are different in temperature. Insulation from external heat to protect the inside is done in the space shuttle. Here the insulation is done by radiating the heat outwards without conducting it. Sounds counterintuitive, right? Don't worry, we'll explain it. A great example for this are the heat tiles used on space shuttles. When a space shuttle enters into the atmosphere, they experience massive amounts of atmospheric friction. This causes it to reach temperatures of up to 1600 degrees centigrade. But the inside of the space shuttle stays at a temperature of 30 degrees. This was done by keeping the thermal conductivity of the material as low as possible. The tile had a thermal conductivity value of 0.126 watt per meter Kelvin and a heat transfer rate of 0.149 watt per centimeter square. Whereas the heat transfer by thermal radiation was found to be 26.62 watt per centimeter square. This means that the tile radiated up to 180 times more heat into the atmosphere than it conducted into the surface. We'll leave a link to the calculations in the description in case you want to check them. Just like how the insulation is used to keep heat outside, it is also used to keep the heat inside. A great example for this are flasks. Let me tell you, a lot of science is present in keeping your coffee or tea hot throughout the morning or evening. This is the reason why most flasks can hardly hold more than two glasses of hot coffee or tea. Flasks are made of three layers. First, you have the outer layer, which is almost always made of a reflective metal or plastic. Then we have the hollow container. Inside the container, a silvery mirror coating is given. We'll explain each of these in detail. The silver coating in the inside of the flask prevents the loss of heat in the liquid by reflecting the radiation back into it. The hollow container is vacuum inside. This prevents the loss of heat through convection. The plastic surrounding the hollow container prevents the loss of heat by means of conduction. Lastly, the metallic surface that covers the flask is there to protect all the delicate internals. People normally test whether flasks work properly or not by pouring very hot water into it and touching the flask. If the flask is cool to touch or is at room temperature, it is working as it should. If the flask is warm, then there's a loss of heat and the flask is not working properly. In short, the flask works by preventing heat transfer by conduction, convection and radiation. Well, that's it guys. Hope you understood what thermal insulation is and we'll meet you again in the next one. Until then, bye.